Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at a very simple circuit. It's called a boost voltage circuit using bootstrapping. Now, some people will find this useful, and if not, you can keep it in the back of your mind for later projects. So this very simple circuit, I'll, give, I'll show you a little block diagram. So it has an input and it has an output, and we input a square wave, and an output will get a square wave. So here's the little block diagram. So we have a square wave input, a 5 volt square wave, into the boost circuit, which is powered by 5 volts. And we're going to get a square wave out of 8.8 .8 volts. So this circuit is going to boost the, the 5 volt uh, square wave to an 8.8 .8 volt square wave. And we only have 5 volts to deal with, so the power supply to the boost circuit is only 5 volts. Okay, I have my circuit powered up with 5 volts, which you can see at the very top. And I have an input, a square wave input, of 2 kilohertz at 5 volts peak to peak. And you can see it here, these alligator clips, so that's my input and that's my ground, into the circuitry. Then I have a scope on the output. So we'll put the scope on the input, and we can see our input is a 5 volt peak to peak at 2 kilohertz. Now if you look at the output, we can see we have 8.8 .8 volts peak to peak, 2 kilohertz. And I'll bump the frequency up to 10 kilohertz, and you can see the output now is uh, 10 kilohertz, 8.8 .8 volts. And I'll take it up to 200 kilohertz, and you can see the output square wave of 200 kilohertz at 8.8 .8 .8 volts. So we're boosting our signal, our 5 volt peak to peak signal from our input and we're getting an 8.8 .8 volt peak-to-peak uh, -peak on our output. Okay, here's the schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard, my voltage boost circuit using bootstrapping. And you can see the input square wave, it's 5 volts peak-to-peak. -peak. Now 3.3 volts will also work, and it's driving this transistor, and we're getting an 8.8 .8 volt output with a 5 volt power supply feeding the whole circuit. So when the clock goes high, it's going to turn on this transistor, the collector will be pulled to ground, and our output will be low. So now we know the output square wave will be the inverted signal from the input. And with the transistor on, now this capacitor here can charge up. It can charge up from the 5 volt power supply through the first diode, through the capacitor, through the second diode, and through the collector to ground. So this capacitor will charge up to VCC minus 2 diode drops. So it's going to charge up to 3.8 volts. So now we're going to have 3.8 volts across this capacitor. So now when the clock goes low, this transistor will shut off so we can take it out of the circuit. So now we're going to have 5 volts from the power supply fed through this 1K ohm resistor to the bottom of the capacitor. So this point now will jump up by 5 volts. Now if this point jumps up by 5 volts, this point will also have to jump up by 5 volts. And since it's got 3.8 volts already across it, it's going to jump up to 8.8 .8 volts, which is fed through the 1K ohm resistor to the output. So we're going to get an 8.8 .8 volt square wave output from this circuit. Now this circuit has limitations. We only have so much charge on this capacitor, and it's fed through a 1K ohm resistor to the output, so we can load it down very easily. So we have to make sure that our, our, what we're feeding will be a high impedance. Now originally I used this circuit to drive a MOSFET, a gate of a MOSFET, because it was not logic level, so I wanted to boost it up to 8.8 .8 volts. So I had to pick a MOSFET that had a very low input capacitance from the gate to source. And if you look at the, the data sheet, you look at the CISS spec, and you look for one that has a very low uh, capacitance because now if you have a capacitor on the input, the ground, we're going to have a charging circuit, an RC circuit, this R here in the C of the capacitor, and we're going to get a charging characteristic and that's going to round off the leading edge of our square wave. So make sure if you want to drive a MOSFET that you find one that has a very low input capacitance from the gate to source and this circuit will work for you. Okay, so that was a little tutorial on my voltage boost circuit using bootstrapping. Now pay attention to the limitations, like I mentioned in the video. So whatever you're driving, whatever circuit you're driving, make sure it's high impedance and has a low value capacitance or you're going to load down the circuit. So keep this circuit in mind, write it down, put it uh, in the back of your mind, because uh, sometime you might be working on a project where this might come in handy to solve some of your problems.